This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so we are working on a generator. Not just any generator, my favorite generator to work on. Pretty much the only generator I work on, Generac. We've got an over or RPM sense loss, which is very common. We've got our books there. So it's a 1505. Not real sure. I would not be surprised if we start it up and it runs just fine. Uh, generally, I'll look over batteries. Filter looks fine. There we go. There's our battery. Let's just go ahead and turn it off. Hit enter to acknowledge it. Let's hit enter or start and see if it cranks over. Maybe just a junk battery. Attempt one. Didn't even crank over. Kind of reminds you of Ford. Quality job one. So we may have us a start relay controlling the start contactor. Uh, taking a dump. Hard to say. Yeah, this don't have that little relay. Yeah, I don't think this one has that little relay. I'm falling behind on the times, guys. So let's go ahead and check the battery. See what happens to the voltage when we crank it over. So we're gonna go ahead and put probe on battery post to battery post. We have 13.6. Correct polarity for the couch warriors out there that would call that out. There we go, 13.56. Let's kick manual. And never dropped in voltage. So potentially the battery is fine. Potentially. Let's get down to the start solenoid and see if we can get on that and see if we're getting 12 volts down to that. Once the obvious things are eliminated, then I go on to the book. You should be able to figure out most of the basic stupid stuff like batteries and things like that uh, without a book. So let's go ahead. We can go ahead and hook on to our negative on the battery. Or we could even hook on to the ground of the motor. Let's get down here to the start solenoid. We have 12 volts coming to this right here. So that right there should be 12 volts. We have 13.94. Go ahead, hit enter. Go ahead, hit auto. Oh, voltage dropped down to nothing. That's not good, is it? We didn't have that problem when we were on the other one. So let's just keep in mind here, I went to the center post. So do we have a problem with our actual battery connections between the positive and the post, the actual clamp and the post. So now that we went from the center, showing that the battery didn't drop, let's go ahead and go off, enter. Let's watch it now. Yep, look at that. Massive voltage drop. But when we went to the center post, we had voltage. You can check between your center conductor and your clamp, and that'll tell you if you get voltage loss on that which is another way of doing it. Here is just center to center. Now we're down to 12 volts, 11 volts. Yeah, things are taking a dump real fast. Off, enter, manual. Okay, there it didn't drop. Now we're gonna check between the center conductor of the battery post and the battery. We got some fluctuations there. So we're gonna go enter, off, and we're gonna hit go, go. And look at that. So when we move that battery post, it started to work. All right, so like I said, we got issues with battery posts. They need cleaned up. Most common problem with most of these generators is the batteries. Let's go ahead and do a load test on this battery. So let's go ahead and isolate this thing. I don't know what year this battery is. It's probably old. Let's check our water levels, see where that's at. I don't recommend 
using your good screwdriver on this like I'm going to. I actually have a dedicated generator screwdriver because it will eat up your screwdriver if you don't get the acid off of it. All the cells are a little low, but they're not exposed. Uh, yeah, none of them are exposed, so they need a little bit of water. Put that back on, let's run our test on it. We may just replace this battery. So we've isolated one side. Let's go ahead and isolate the other side. Normally you want to do your negative first. I had plenty of room in here, so I didn't worry about it. But battery? it seems that way, or the posts are just nasty. So um, yeah, I'm gonna run a test on it, but if it's been more than four years, I say we replace it. Yeah, it has been 2015. Okay, yeah, then let's just get you a new battery. All right, customer said it's been since 2015, so we're right at what, eight years? So we're going to replace this battery. We can test it, but I'm not keeping it. We're replacing it. It's a really nice area here. That is pretty neat. Got the little crick thing going across there. Going to get that battery and then we'll come back. We just checked the oil. It is uh, just a touch above the very top uh, drilled port there on the oil. So we're good on oil. I guess they changed it uh, within a year. To make this easy, I have a little carrying device here that makes it simple. You can be careful, you don't want these ground cables to hook together. So you don't want them touching the ground or the hot wire on the ground. Uh, yeah, 2016. The right here on the side. Yep, 2016. Time to go. So just pick a bad boy up, carry her away. And the cold crankings on this thing is 575. Says great. I don't trust it. At that age, it's not worth it. You spend how many thousands of dollars on a standby generator to try to save $100, $150 on a battery? just ain't worth it. It's like going to the doctor. It's the same thing. It's called preventive maintenance. Not worth uh, having a service call at uh, the middle of night. All right, so we got us a Die Hard here. It's new. It's 510 cranking. Yes, it is a little under what they rated it for, and they should be 525. Comes in at great. Came in at 480. Ain't the greatest tester in the world, but it does fairly decent. What they recommend is using as a digital one. I've sent, mentioned that a couple times before. I also have a load tester that I use. Okay, we got our bag of tools here, dedicated for generator service. A lot of metric stuff, which is a lot of the issue with most everything here is at metric, we're used to using standard. Uh, get some battery protector spray, that comes in handy. Let's go ahead and get a cleaning brush out here which I usually use a three quarter inch. And let's get in there and clean that nastiness off of the post and get it off of the negative. Now you gotta inspect these cables sometimes. They can have problems right in that area right there. You can see that the negative is shorter. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on that one right there. We'll put, and put this positive on. Let's go ahead and keep these separated as we're putting it in. Do you have a spreader here, old thing. I can separate the battery posts a little bit. I've mentioned in some of my other videos using a specific gravity tester, test individual cells. Almost nobody does that anymore, but it was taught to me by Interstate Battery. And I think it's something good to know how to do. Okay, be careful too. You don't want to get too stupid with it because you can get cracked clamps, and then that just completely screws you. And basically, it's like a, spur, a plastic coating. It's from what I've noticed with it, and it helps keep the air off of the battery terminal. And I like to clean it up a little bit. I don't like it all over the battery itself. Just want it on the post, and you don't really want to put it on ahead of time either, because like I said, it makes, it's almost like a plastic coating. Now, should start right up. Look at that. That seems pretty good to me. Let's go over here, it's kind of convenient. They've got a whole house transfer switch here. This makes it easy for me to test the transfer switch, make sure that it's working properly. 
I'm always leery about just verifying that it starts and nothing else. Really, it's a good practice to make sure that the transfer switch works the way I do it, which the factory does not recommend it, is I pull the fuses. That way it uh, transfers over and back without killing power to, to the house in advance. Looks like that's messing, that's great. Probably be nice if that was in there. Otherwise those things eventually could fall out. Let's see if we can make this work. I haven't tried this before. I was thinking of using duct tape because it'd be a little stronger, but duct tape probably cause more people to be pissy about it because it might catch on fire, might be conductive. So let's see if we can make electrical tape work. If all I did was generators, I would probably have this on my truck. But like I've mentioned many times, I'm an HVAC technician, HVACR technician. I do a little of everything under the sun. There we go, it's better than what it was, let's put it that way. And it's not as tight as good as I want, but it's in there. All right, so we need to pull that fuse and you can tell right here, somebody used thermostat wire. Thermostat wire is not rated for 250 volts. It's rated for low voltage only. Whoever installed this broke code. I believe I got it recorded. So we just ran the generator and tested and verified that we had the proper frequency and voltage uh, before we do this test that I'm about ready to do. The way this works is, is we got a transfer relay here, transfer switch relay. The relay controls the high voltage. When the generator senses the voltage dropped, the generator sends 12 volts DC over to the transfer switch. The 194 is a constant 12 volts, always there. Like right now, if I go from that 12 volts to ground, you've got nine volts, which because they're not really tied together and ground wise, they're not bonded. That's why you're getting that weirdo stuff. If you go to the negative, you've got 12.4 volts, which is battery voltage. That negative is always there. Now, when you switch over to the 23 terminal, which is switching negative, meaning it grounds itself when it wants to transfer, that's going to energize when the transfer switch is calling. So when we pull this fuse up on top, which the factory does not recommend doing it this way, and it is dangerous if you're not using the right tools and you're not careful, you could get shocked or killed. So you don't want to do these sort of things. None of these videos are for instructional purposes. They're all here for entertainment. That way I'm not liable for any stupidity because everyone's got different levels. And unfortunately there's some stupid people that don't realize they're stupid. And unfortunately they get killed or hurt and then they want to sue somebody for it or their family wants to sue them. We're going to measure 12 volts DC here in a minute once we pull this fuse. The generator's going to count down. Usually some times it's about 10 seconds, some are less, some are more. And it will energize 12 volts here in a second and you'll hear it transfer over. 10 volts, probably because we got such small wires, 18 gauge, not too impressed. Going to let them know that that needs to be changed. So we, that's the DC voltage, that's switched, as I showed you. Here is the AC output from the generator. We're at 242. Still holding right in there at 60 hertz. Good to go on that. It transferred over to the generator. Now we're gonna make sure it transfers back. There we go. Put the fuse back in there. The fuse puller I'm using here is a 34-001 from Ideal Industries. It's rated for 250 volts, 30 amps. All right, just switched back. We're good to go there. Utility, 242 also. And right in at 59.99, just almost perfectly 60 hertz. Careful putting this on. You can uh, accidentally drop it into the panel. There is a manual uh, transfer here if your transfer switch was damaged. However, I will warn you, if you have power on both sides, it will yank this back out of your hand and potentially throw it through your face. Not real keen on that. As long as the power's out, not a big deal. Uh, the generic way to do this, flip that off, and it will cause it to trans over, transfer over just like I did. That would be the easiest way for somebody that doesn't really know what they're wanting, to, what they're doing, don't know, you know, don't want to take a chance of getting hurt. 
that's the safest way to do it. But this isn't my house, so I'm not going to do that and cause possibly clocks to go out. Uh, something important could be running, cause problems there. I don't like dealing with all that. And like I said, I'd, at this time I'd already checked the oil, made sure the oil levels were fine. I made sure that the generator was producing the voltage that was in a safe level so I don't damage anything inside the house. That's pretty much it for this particular task. Now, if you're wanting to avoid a lot of these problems, I did a video on how to maintain your generator. I'll link that up here in the top, along with possibly some other videos that I've done. The uh, generators, for the most part nowadays, are a lot better than what they used to be. The older ones had a lot of issues. Like I said, we can look around for oil leakage, things like that, which you, know, you can see that they've had a little bit from when the guys have changed the oil. System's ready to run. You can go through here and we can reset things, check things. There's a code here that we need. I've shown what I carry inside my little tool bag here. Um, it's just got basics of what I need most of the time. Nothing fancy. They're cheap tools, Stanleys, things like that. I don't like putting a lot of money into something I hardly ever use anymore. Uh, that way, also, if I lose it, not a big deal. Um, I just don't do many generators anymore. I used to do a bunch, and now I don't. And I like doing refrigeration and stuff a lot better, so my desire to learn it and continue with it just is not there. But unfortunately, no one else's desire is there either. I made sure everything's tight, make sure all the spark plugs are all on, all those normal things there that you wanna make sure of. We'll just make sure everything's reset, that way the guy doesn't get a code here shortly about checking the battery, which is, a uh, yellow light on these, uh, on the outside corner of this, has uh, green, yellow, and red. Red means it's not going to run. Uh, yellow means a warning that, hey, it's time to check things over. You know, we got a lot of calls for that. Here's some of the books I got. Liquid cooled. This is when I thought it was 250,000. Maybe it's 150,000 that I went through. And then some of the old books that they don't give you, you have to literally um, use the digital copy, which I hate. Uh, here's all my fast checks for fixed, exci fixed, fixed excitation to make things a little easier. And then your core power, these things here are total garbage. Yeah, the last time I went through it was Columbus in 18. I've been meaning to do this for a while, but I went ahead and put the code there. Have it on my notepad. I made a tiny, tiny one that I'm gonna hide inside the unit, which is a lot of the guys, a good majority of them, haven't been to class on this and they just do the maintenance. This will make it so they can easily remember the code to reset the maintenance so that I'm not getting called out a week later that the yellow light's on. Okay, now we can go down to submenus, go down to dealer. We can display the voltage, 13.6. Couldn't see that before. Get dealer edit, start delay, run hours, got 51 hours on it. Uh, the dropout and pickup and current and all that happy jazz. Reset maintenance, yes. Now on the test, you can put it in test and you can actually watch to see what's going on. I have other videos that show this sort of thing. Now you can go into submenus and go to maintenance and here's your run hours and you've got your maintenance log. So now it's been reset prior to that. Look, service B schedules, it hadn't been reset. People just been, nobody's ever reset it. Scheduled, next maintenance, 200 hours or next year. So now we're good to go. And I got a sticker here for the battery. We'll go ahead and stick that on the battery so we know when it was installed. Sometimes I use marker. Sometimes I use my labeler. It just depends on how excited I am for the day. So I'll go ahead and stick that on there right there. I usually put on there, check the water levels and things like that, but, and we'll put that sticker down here inside. And that way, unless he's poking in here, he's not going to notice that. Or actually we could put it right down here. Tell you what, that way the guys can at least see it that's there. And it's small enough that you have to know what you're looking for. You have to understand what that is. So big thing here, guys, remember that it is on auto mode. Uh, don't hurt to check date and time, make sure that's correct. 
so we're good there. So this generator is ready to roll. Now I've explained a couple times on how to do this door. Several people don't understand it. You can see this pin right here that's partially bent. It's flimsy aluminum. And you have these flimsy little hooks here. People bend the snot out of them all the time. The way I do it is I hook the bottom ones first, bring it up. Those little hook jobs there hit it. So now I put my knees gently against it, lift up just enough that you pass those hooks and pop it in, pop it down. She's locked into place. We're on auto. The customer did not lock it before. So that uh, wraps that up, guys. Well, if you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, there's other videos that you can click on the link. I'll put them all in a playlist that says generators and you can check them all out. Hey, thank you for watching. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.